Hey, good morning. I started working on this thing in uh, January and uh, kind of got busy and I decided to come back to this because I've been involved in uh, several conversations about uh, what's going to happen in a hyperinflationary uh, should hit the fan scenario and Venezuela is the most recent example and there, this is happening all the time all around the world and uh, but this is a perfect time to talk about Venezuela because one is so close to the USA and uh, it's very well documented at this point so I've put together some uh, slides hopefully this isn't going to be PowerPoint poisoning to you but uh, I think this is uh, this is really important for you to understand how precious metals um, could save your life and it's it's working out in Venezuela. In fact, you're going to learn a few things different than what a lot of people are spouting about. Um, so I I learned something here, and I was able to prove in my own mind, you know, how this is going to work out. So a uh, couple things right off the top, you know, the gold silver ratio did not change. So in shit hit the fan scenario, hyperinflation, a lot of people are thinking silver is going to be just much more valuable because. Uh, it's just, you know, what people are going to use over gold and it's going to be more demand for it. But that did not happen. The gold silver ratio is exactly the same. Um, a lot of people lost their jobs. In fact, uh, three main people left the country because they just could not survive. And they must have had family in other countries and they just got the hell out of there. They abandoned everything that they had to leave the country because it became such a shithole. Um, People that uh, had degrees moved into prostitution because the uh, they there was really no jobs when the whole thing collapsed. The government, uh, if you were on uh, government welfare, that was cut off. The government had no money to fund basic operations. Um, it, it's like a, a horrible, horrible situation. So let's go through some of this thing and uh, see if see if uh, you agree with my assumptions or what my findings I should say all right so the first thing is this uh, the fiat currency um, now things have changed a little bit from when I first started putting this together so this was uh, middle of January you can see that gold was uh, 1291 an ounce and uh, silver was 1564 and this shows historical pricing in US dollars for for gold there All right, so here's the exchange rate conversion. Now, one of the things that uh, I, I went ahead and put together uh, a list of different uh, currencies so that you can kind of see what the uh, US dollar uh, can purchase in other countries. And then down here, I put the uh, uh, Venezuela uh, conversion, which it, it came out to almost $250,000 of uh, Bolivars to buy, you know, one U.S. dollar, and you can see that uh, the Indian rupee it takes seventy-one dollars, it takes one hundred nine dollars Japanese yen, you know, almost seven dollars Chinese, and so this gives you an idea how far out uh, the the Bolivar uh, went. And I used the um, a calculation using the gold price versus the uh, the USA gold price, and that's how I came up with the uh, Boulevard inflation rate or conversion rate we could call it all right so this is the curious thing pure gold costs 320 million dollars in Venezuelan boulevards where in the USA it's say thirteen hundred dollars in uh, silver it's uh, nearly four million dollars for an ounce of silver and uh, in the U.S., let's say it's seventeen dollars. Um, now, if you calculate these together, you will find that the gold-silver ratio is still eighty-two point six. So you would think, with as far out of whack as this is, that you would think silver would be worth more because that's what most people would uh, go after. But that's not the case. So the gold-silver ratio did not change, even in at least Venezuela's currency collapse. And here's an example of the hyperinflation that Venezuela's <coughs> gone through. Um, so you can see that it was uh, really stable from 2010 and then in 2012 it started taking off. 
and then in 2014, you know, it's still the same slope for these uh, couple years, but then all of a sudden the slope changed, and this is when it, it really went uh, bonkers. And uh, they ended up having to change. This is on this scale over here. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm pointing at the wrong thing. I got two screens here. Let me see if I can get this back down on the bottom. There, here we go, sorry. So this uh, scale here, this is actually the, uh, the dollar denomination. They actually had to you know, add additional zeros because it, it just took more money. And so you ended up, uh, this is brand new currency that they created and they basically removed uh, some of the zeros at this point here. And uh, it, it uh, you know, it's still just showing that uh, you basically have to use, you know, what is that? That's million dollars. So you have to use uh, ten million dollar bills, but they've redenominated to a hundred dollars. So uh, the, it's just it's a terrible, terrible situation when you lose control of your currency. All right. So these are news articles that I found, and you can go um, type in this and find this article. But I just did a quick summary of the article. So you know they had. Uh, Hyperinflation, power cuts, uh, shortage of food and medicines are driving Venezuelans out of the country. And yet, the man many blame for the dire state of the union, Maduro, is about to be sworn in as president in another six years. In fact, he was. So what's going on with the economy? How did it get this point? And what has government done to halt the decline? So it's currencies losing value and prices are soaring at speed. This is called hyperinflation. It means the price of even the most basic items have skyrocketed. I have some examples of basic staples everybody uses. Venezuela's government took five zeros off its currency and gave it a name, a new name back in August. And it also raised the minimum wage a lot. But many people voted with their feet. Three million left the country since 2014, the government has added, has said the figure is lower. Um, I thought this would be interesting because I remember when this whole thing started that the um, our government, Democrats in particular, were just saying, oh my God, that's a fantastic thing what Venezuela is doing where they've um, nationalized all their oil production and they've taken the profits and you know spread it across the country to everyone. And we had just, and, you know, so I was trying to find, because I remember Pelosi and, and these other people were uh, from the Democratic leadership actually traveled down there and were like, oh, this is the greatest thing we need to do this in the USA. You know, but it looks like everything's been scrubbed about uh, Pelosi specifically. Uh, but I did find um, 10 Hollywood types that uh, and, and other people that have, uh, uh, you know, just sang their praises. So let's, let's go through a few of these and see if you recognize them. Norm Chomsky. Uh, MIT professor retired. He was a supporter and just you know thought it was the greatest thing in the world. Sean Penn, yeah, what a douchebag. This guy's you know even got um, Denise Sousa's kind of calling him out, said, "Hey, what do you think now? Is this guy really the greatest thing in the world?" And he's completely destroyed his country. Oliver Stone, great film director, in some people's eyes, and uh, just. Even in Twitter, this was in 2013, saying that, you know, Chavez was the greatest thing in the world since sliced bread, right? Jesse Jackson, what a surprise. Everybody loves socialism. Michael Moore, yeah, another big surprise. Jeremy Corbyn, British Labor Party. Diego Maradona. Let me see if I kill this doggone phone. All right. Argentina soccer star, Naomi Campbell, supermodel, apparently not known for her brains. Joseph Stiglitz, an economist. Yeah, apparently economists don't understand. Danny Glover, yeah. 
apparently not very bright. All right, this is, uh, this is some of the worst parts about hyperinflation. It doesn't matter if you've got degrees. I know a lot of people with just tremendous degrees, but they don't have uh, currency insurance. So think about this. You buy life insurance, you buy health insurance, you buy car insurance, you buy house insurance, but most people don't think about buying currency insurance. And you know, gold and silver is currency insurance. And so these people that were very book smart didn't think about how to protect themselves from their own country uh, destroying their currency. And so they probably were making tons of money and all that stopped and then they did not have any reserves. And even if you were saving in the country's currency, it became worthless. So you have to have something outside your country's currency and that's what precious metals do for you. But these uh, very well-to-do, um, very educated people ended up having to go into prostitution to be able to support their families. Uh, they had to leave the country because the people in their country didn't have any money and so they went to another country, Colombia, to be able to, you know, survive. Uh, think about what's going to happen to you if you do not protect yourself. Um, I mentioned before, government existence was turned off. The government was broke. The currency was toast. So people starved. And there's a couple of videos were really interesting. If you, you know, type this in, you can go find this video. And it's just the people are like, I don't know how to feed my family. I don't know how to feed my kids. And uh, it's the same problems going to happen, you know, over and over again. This is a like a broken record. Now, if you have precious metals, everybody keeps talking about they got to go buy fractional currency or fractional coins, you know, silver and gold and such. That's not really the case. Um, you don't need to get nickels and dimes and things. And uh, you're, you're better off to just have like one ounce things that are portable. And then you can, if you need to convert it, um, let's say um, you have a one ounce silver coin. You can go to your uh, coin shop or you can go to the pawn shop and they will convert it to the currency that you need to go to the grocery store. You're still going to have your your bank accounts because people are some people are still working and they're getting paid and it's going into their bank account and uh, um, so you will just convert it and then you can go to the store buy what you need and uh, and be able to still survive. So you don't need to worry about you know, in this case, there's, you don't have like an EMP or whatever. Um, this is actually more likely to happen than an EMP or solar CME. And so things are still going to operate. You just uh, can use your jewelry. You can use, you know, gold coins or silver coins. You can still do business. The most, most likely I mean, people are going to want cash, though. They're probably not going to accept checks or credit cards or anything like that. But you can uh, you can still probably use your debit cards and things like that. You're just going to convert it to currency when you need it. But you're, you're only going to take a little bit at a time because you're not going to want to. If the currency is running away really quickly, you don't want to, you know, take a whole bunch of money and convert it because it's just going to be worthless, you know, the next month. So you, you do it as you need to. So don't worry about buying um, smaller coins and such. Um, you know, if you buy silver, that's already, you know, denominated, you know, one eightieth, eighty second the amount of gold to begin with. So you already have, you know, a smaller version of what you need to be able to buy what you need. All right, so here's some examples of, even though you're going to have gold and silver, you're you're not going to be wealthy. You're just going to maintain what you uh, your standard of living. This is where a lot of people, you know, they say, "Oh, look, it's you know, my gold and silver is worth uh, three million dollars uh, an ounce or whatever." But chicken costs fourteen million six hundred thousand um, dollars. So the price of things went up astronomically but your gold and silver kept up with it so here's an example um, 
five pounds of chicken cost uh, nearly 15 million dollars. So if silver is 3.8 million, it would take nearly four ounces of silver coins. In the USA, it would take less than an ounce because here you know, I just pulled this off of Sam's Club. It's like $13 for two uh, two chickens, and uh, that's two. I said two seven-pound chickens, but I think it's uh, two uh, three-and-a-half-pound chickens. So what's going to happen is, um, in this case, you're probably not going to eat a lot of chicken because this isn't as cost-effective because the the price of fresh items are going to be through the roof because um, everything else has gone up significantly and there just aren't that many people to buy it. So they're probably not going to be building or growing mass quantities because the majority of the people did not prepare. So you're going to have to think about this. There's only going to be like 10% of the people that are prepared. The other 90% are just screwed. And so this is going to turn things upside down. So what I basically what I'm telling you is things like chicken will be unobtainium. You may only do go buy it on special occasions. Um, let's go to the next thing. So a bar of soap. One bar of stinking soap costs three and a half million bolivars. Um, now, why is this? Why are some of the things so much more? Well, it could be that they have to bring this in from outside the country. They may not have, uh, um, in fact, you see Palmolive name on that. They probably don't have a manufacturing plant in that country. And so things that you have to buy from outside the country are gonna cost a lot more than things that are uh, built in the country. Or manufactured in the country so you need to keep that in mind some of the things that you might be used to you know purchasing from you know other countries will probably become unobtainium but just think about this um, so this will take basically an ounce of silver just to get one bar of soap in the USA you can get 20 bars of soap for a half ounce of silver so this is another thing that becomes unobtainium so there might be things that you you should just uh, obviously just stock ahead in the event that uh, um, you know we know we're going to go through a currency reset we just don't know if we're going to lose the reserve currency status or not if we lose res reserve currency status we're going to probably be similar to uh, Venezuela but if they somehow retool it and just say hey, we're now going to be you know some type of gold standard that that could be different all right so cheese so cheese is seven and a half million bolivars. So it next takes nearly two ounces of silver coins. In the USA, it's about a half an ounce for two pounds of silver. So again, cheese becomes almost unobtainium because I don't know that you're gonna to wanna to waste your money to go you know, pay twice as much than what you're used to paying. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, package of sanitary pads, basically one ounce of silver. Um, in the US, so that, and I, you know, they didn't specify how many were in that pack. It was hard to read on, actually, it looks like there's a 10 on there. So in the U.S., you get 10 times the amount of tampons for uh, three quarters of an ounce of silver. So, you know, again, simple things that you might be used to having. This might be something you need to stock up for. Pasta takes about a third of an ounce of uh, silver coin to buy, you know, uh, one kilogram package, one pound. So what is that? Uh, looks like a regular package that you might get in the store where in Sam's Club, I can go buy six pounds for a half an ounce of silver. Roll of toilet paper. Um, takes 70% uh, of an ounce of silver for one roll of toilet paper, yet here for 1.25 ounces of silver, you can get 45 rolls. So again, toilet paper, they must not have a way to manufacture it there and therefore um, it's just astronomically expensive. So you probably need to stock up on simple things like this. So 2.2 pounds of rice costs uh, nearly 70% of a silver coin in the USA you can buy 50 pounds of rice. So, gold and silver will allow you to buy a lot of these uh, basic items. But again, you're not gonna feel rich. Now you'll feel rich compared to 90% of the people in the country that didn't prepare, but 
you're really not going to be rich because your standard of living is going to go down. The, some of the things that you're used to purchasing, you will not be able to purchase, even with gold and silver, except on special occasions. So um, I guarantee you, a lot of us, we're going to be a lot skinnier because we're not going to be eating these uh, very rich foods that we're used to because you're not going to be able to afford it, even if you did have gold and silver. Um, so just taking all those items that I had listed there, it would cost you, you know, 14 million boulevards versus $60 in the USA. Uh, $300 worth of groceries in the USA, and I have to admit, you know, when I go to Sam's Club or something, I usually spend about 300 bucks. And uh, so that would be equivalent to 75 million boulevards in Venezuela, or 19 ounces of silver, uh, of gold. So how often do you go to the store um, it depends, you know, how much you're going to need to save up. So I'm begging you to uh, purchase gold and silver, and I purchase uh, U.S. Mint coins, and it's mostly because they're the most recognizable. And uh, I do one ounce, you know, gold and silver eagles, roughly 60-40 gold to silver. And uh, you can get fractional amounts, but like I said, it's not really necessary because you can convert to, uh, to the uh, currency through pawn shops and or uh, 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 coin dealers. Um, I've got a little chart we're going to go through uh, buying and selling silver eagles are more cost effective than rounds. You save nearly four dollars for every 20 ounces of silver eagles bought and sold versus rounds. That's a misnomer. Most people are, you know, they forget that there's a buy and sell cost. They only look at the buy cost and they say, oh, you know, you're paying way too much for Eagles, but that's not really the case. You actually come out way ahead because, again, it's, uh, it's the most recognizable and there's much more trust in the uh, Eagles than there are in rounds. Um, some people will tell you to, uh, to only purchase collectible coins, less likely to be confiscated. Um, Collectibles have much larger markups, so you need to keep that in mind, too. All right, so here's the chart. I put this together. Um, basically, what you do is you... Uh, so these are U.S. Mint uh, eagles, silver eagles. And so if you buy uh, one ounce, it costs you this much at that date when I put this together. It tells you that was on the 18th of uh, November. And then if you sell, it costs this much. And so this tells what the spot was, you know, buying it. And then this tells that they gave you a bonus of uh, uh, 8%. Um, and then the silver delta. So basically, uh, if you're buying 20 ounces, this would have been $334 buying. And on the same day, if you said, I want to sell it, it'd be $317. So you would have lost $17 for a roll of 20 ounce coins. Now, if you did a Buffalo rounds, so first off, you can see that you're saving a little bit over a dollar buying it, but you notice that you don't get as much uh, um, when you're selling it. And so uh, when you come over here, it's $302. So you're actually uh, saved $330. Um, 330, I'm sorry, $32 um, buying the rounds, but you notice that uh, you didn't get as much back when you sold. And so it turns out you lose um, $20 um, in this transaction where we lost 17 up here. So it's actually $3, uh, $2.20 difference that you come out ahead with the Eagles. Well, the guys have to make money when they're buying and selling. So that's the bottom line here. Now, you know, when the money is going up significantly, hopefully you bought these at the right price. And as the thing prices go up, you're, you're not actually not going to have a deficit. But my point here is you actually lose less money buying and selling in Eagles than you do in rounds. Now, it turns out that uh, bars, um, those actually have a, uh, um, a better value also but you know when you're buying uh, like 10 ounce bars those are less able to be used in transactions depending unless you're buying something significantly but uh, significant so anyways the uh, bottom line is you're better off you come out losing less money buy and sell uh, with uh, US mint coins than you do with uh, things that aren't as recognizable 
All right, so everybody asked the question, how many ounces of precious metals will you need? Well, it depends on how much you typically spend. So in a year, if you normally spend, uh, let's say you earn 18,000 and you spend all 18,000. So that would be equivalent to a thousand ounces of silver. And so it just depends on each week, how much do you, um, do you um, expect to spend? And so what I did is I said, okay, if you're gonna spend one ounce a week, basically a thousand ounces will last 2.7 years. But if you've got to spend 10 ounces a week, that's only gonna last you know, a third of a year. So if you make $36,000, used to making and spending then you need two then if you had 2,000 ounces of silver same thing um, so this is uh, 5.5 years if you're doing one ounce or it'd be half a year so this tells you how many weeks months and years so you just need to decide how much do you normally spend and you're going to you're going to cut your expenses down to nothing so you're not going to be going on vacation you're not going to be going um, to the movies you're just going to be trying to survive so just you got to figure out for food how much money do you need to be able to feed yourself and you still got to get pay for electricity because um, you've got to uh, pay your mortgage you got to pay your um, taxes, that kind of thing. So you're going to have to figure all that out too. But anyways, I put together three simple tables and this, all you'd have to do is like, you know, double each one if you want, if you needed more or less. And, uh, and so this gives you a rough idea how long things are going to last. All right. So for those that don't know what a, a silver eagle is, when I talked about it before, here's a picture of uh, what a silver eagle looks like. And uh, the Silver Eagle is, again, something that uh, they started making these in, I think it was, uh, uh, oh, 1986. They started making them again in 1986. And uh, so they have, you know, gold and silver eagles are, uh, and then they even have buffaloes. U.S. Mint uh, is making these things. And this is what I recommend just because of the price uh, the value of buying and selling is better with these more recognizable coins. Um, I want to just do a quick chart here because people, millennials haven't lived through it. I have, I've seen us, our government debasing our coinage, you know, back in, uh, this is kind of interesting when you think about it, even when you start with our penny, um, it used to be 95% copper and then 5% zinc. So, in uh, from 1909 to 1982 a penny is still it's actually worth more than the face value so it's worth two cents if you had the 95 percent copper and five percent zinc um, in 1943 during the war they converted to steel I, I couldn't find a price just for the steel what that would be but um, in 1982 to 2014, they converted from 97.5% uh, zinc to 2.5% copper. And so now the penny is only worth, you know, a penny. But you can see it's lost half its value when they did that. Um, I remember when they first started doing this. Well, it's costing us too much to make these things. But, you know, in the old days, our money was actually money. Now it's currency. It has, uh, it's worth less than what the face value is so they don't want you saving it and that's why they've done it so uh, we had nickels used to be 35 percent silver uh, 56 percent copper and nine percent manganese and so here's a nickel you know we think of it as being a five cents but uh, those original nickels are worth 88 cents today because of the silver content so think about that it's our nickels today are worth what our paper dollars say on the front of them. Um, then they converted to 75% uh, copper, 25% nickel, and you can see it dropped it down to four cents. So this is debasing it. They, they dropped it by a huge factor here. Um, dimes were 90% silver, 10% copper. So these original dimes all the way up to 1964 a dime is worth a dollar eleven. Okay, so now it's worth a penny because it's ninety-two percent copper, eight percent nickel. 
So, anyways, uh, this is what the government's done to us. They've they've eliminated our, they turned our money. Coins used to be money, and now they're currency. And currency is only has uh, has no intrinsic value or very limited intrinsic value. Quarters. 90% silver, 10% copper. Today's melt value, uh, and again, this was a month ago, so it's it's more now because everything went up since our, our last uh, put this together, but $2.80. Now it's worth four cents because of what they've done. They changed it to copper and nickel. Half dollar, $5.50, 57 cents. And then they uh, they did a um, they went to 40% silver and copper during this time period. They dropped it to half, and now it's uh, seven cents. So they've completely debased you know the half dollars. So uh, you can go buy junk silver where it has the silver percentage of 90% uh, silver and. Uh, you can have those and use them as uh, you know when all hell breaks loose you can turn them in and these are these have the lowest markup because they're they're used coins they're not they've been in circulation so they're kind of beat up versus the uh, the brilliant uncirculated um, uh, that I was recommending from the gold and silver eagles buying from the mint today so these are uh, these are available and you can buy them and they're not as expensive to have but you, there's a little bit of education process that you're going to have when you go try to use these because most people are not aware that we used to have real money that circulated. So here's the gold eagle and uh, this is a coin that is uh, has one ounce pure gold in there but it actually is mixed with the uh, some other uh, elements to make it to where it uh, ends up uh, being able to carry in your pocket and it won't be uh, it won't get as banged up and dinged as uh, pure gold which is very soft they have a US Buffalo mint now this is a pure gold coin this is one you wouldn't necessarily want to carry around in your pocket because it's very soft it's 24 karat uh, but this is also available from the US mint and I have some of these because I just thought they were a beautiful coin all right, so everybody asks, you know, what happens to your personal debt in a collapse? Um, so if you have a, uh, let's say a mortgage and it's fixed rate, um, and let's hope that you're kind of still getting paid, right? Your, your pay hopefully is going to go up some amount to keep up with inflation, but your, your payment will stay the same. Um, because it was uh, fixed at a particular interest rate so you you actually will come out ahead as long as you're getting some sort of payment or if you were fortunate enough to save a substantial amount of gold and silver because gold and silver will keep ahead of the hyperinflation so but if they change the terms of the loan depending on the fine print in your loan or they change to a gold standard um, that can really screw screw because uh, unless you have substantial gold and silver to pay the thing off you're going to end up uh, having a default so one of the key things here I'm, I'm thinking is you want to get rid of variable interest rate debt so credit cards you know those are not fixed interest rates uh, some people are not very bright and they do uh, variable rate loans for their houses and stuff and that's that's you're just going to be screwed in this case because it's going to go up with inflation and you will you will lose your house all right so here's some of the mitigation things so first thing get dispose of variable interest rate purchase precious metals combine resources you know co-locate with multiple family members to pool resources you know one electric bill one water bill one mortgage bill one cable bill uh, it's also less expensive to feed many than a few, as long as everybody's able to contribute, that is. Um, anyone living on government welfare and zero savings will not be of any financial help and because there'll be zero income. Invest in food, store food, you know, rice, beans, water, powdered drinks, dried meats, vegetables, seasonings, fruits, grow food, you know, 
think about perennial things, things that are going to come back each year so that you don't have to have buy seeds or plants. You know, raise chicken for eggs and meats and consider raising rabbits. Capture, you know, rainwater. Invest in your own energy, you know, solar, generator, batteries, propane, wood. That's it. All right, so uh, um, quick and dirty. I hope, uh, hope this was helpful for you. It, uh, it's something that I think that uh, a lot of people will be surprised when this happens. I mean, when you talk to people, they have recency bias. It's just something that they uh, have never experienced. They're not paying attention. Our media is not pointing it out. We're not trying to hold our government accountable. So um, it's not on everybody's radar and there's going to be a lot of people caught off guard and it's going to be a disaster uh, when this happens. Um, so anyways, I hope, hope you take this seriously and I hope you uh, try to do something to protect yourself. God bless.